Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News and I have the pleasure to be joined by Dempsey McKean. Dempsey, how are you today, mate? Good, mate. Just finished a nice big hard training session, so uh, we're closing in now. I think we're what, just over two weeks out now, so... Perfect, mate. I mean, it was a tough session in there. Obviously, I think I kind of watched all the sparring that's been going on today, but you, yourself versus Jordan Thompson in there. It's a bit, mm -hmm. of a bit of a hard session. Talk to me about that, mate. Yeah, definitely. Um, done 10 rounds with the boys. Obviously, ten, uh, five with Darren Sealy to start, and then Jordan Thompson jumped in for the last five, and me and Jordan always have good hard rounds, you know. Um, he's been a big part of my, my sparring for this fight as well. He's a big guy, he's six foot seven. He's got the speed, he's a cruiserweight, he's got the speed of a cruiserweight, the fitness of a cruiserweight, the pressure and the size of a heavyweight, you know. So uh, he's been very beneficial for my sparring in this camp, obviously my stable mate and jumping in doesn't have a fight coming out. Uh, but you know, he's been helping me out every week with rounds and you know, he's, he's, I think he's probably the best sparring that I've, that I've ever had. You know, out of all the top guys that have sparred with Daniel Dubois and AJ and um, Dillian White, you know, he gives me the best hardest rounds and you know, he's, he's um, very fast as well. So it's good rounds. As you saw, it's very hard, good rounds as well, good competitive rounds. Definitely, if, if recording sparring footage and putting it on the line, <laughs> like, if I was allowed to do that, mate, I would, because yeah. I think everyone deserves to watch, yeah, to watch yeah. that, it was great. I yeah. mean, we'll jump straight into it, so Tyson Fury, Dylan White, Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker, they were all names that kind of have fallen, fall, fallen through for you over, over, over the last couple of months, but Philip Hergovic, signed, sealed, it's delivered, you must be buzzing to not only not only have a fight, but have a fight of this magnitude as well. Definitely, just as you said, it's signed, sealed, delivered, started to get the goosebumps as well, you know. I just thought it was a bit surreal that we're finally here, and two weeks out, everything's on track, body's feeling great, training's been great. Uh, like you said, we have Joseph Parker, Tyson Fury, AJ, Dillian White, all so close, yet all slipped through the fingertips as I'm kind of getting used to, slowly but surely, but you know, with the Herkovich fight, both under the matchroom banner, you know, he wants another a fight before he's obviously looking to fight Usyk and a Southpaw. You know, it's probably the best possible outcome for myself out of all the fights. You know, obviously a win here will put me straight into contention to fight the winner of Dubois and Usyk. So, can't get much fast track than that. And then after a big fight, you know, so like I said, the winner here gets mandated straight away to fight for all the titles. So, massive opportunity, but obviously I've got a tough task in front of me, which is Hergovic. You know, but it's a, it's a fight we're very confident in and um, a very winnable fight also. Definitely, I mean, let, let's jump into the first bit there. So, like, obviously, Philip Hergovic, obviously, he's fought Zhang, he's fought Zhang, and the, like I think you said in a previous interview that like your records are similar outside mm. outside of that outside of that Zhang fight, which debate a lot of people thought that Zhang could have could have nicked it as well. Mm. What what do you know of Philip, Philip Hergovic as well? Obviously, been around the heavyweight scene, and also I think he's an Olympian as well. Yes, I think he got um, bronze at the Olympics. I think maybe like might have medaled in some of the Europeans in that. So it's funny because I've also said as well we got two guys from. Two different worlds at the amateur world you know he's got we've got an olympian who's medaled gold at the europeans and all that and then you've got a guy like myself who hasn't had one amateur fight at all so i didn't have any amateur boxing fights went straight into professional boxing after having a handful of mma and muay thai fights as well so uh you can really see you know you don't really have to have to have that extensive amateur career to to be fighting at the top and showcase and and get these wins so um i'm looking forward to kind of showing that as well you can come from a background and know extensive amateur career at all and, and take these guys out so I'm, I'm looking forward to that definitely mate and like, and like you said obviously you get mandate a win mandate choose the IBF and I think that is the next in rotation as well so it is yeah it will be called and then that will be your next fight obviously mm -hmm. we don't want to overlook Philip Hovich like like you said it's probably a, the toughest fight of your, of mm, your career so far is. but obviously is, is that kind of that mand mandatory position kind of using it as motivation for for this fight yeah, definitely. Like you don't want to look over, overlook any fights, but this is just a. It just shows you like we're on the fringe of obviously you know changing my life, changing my family's life, fighting for the world titles. You know, getting an opportunity to even fight for a world title is massive. You know, it's it's hard enough. You know, so many guys, so many good fighters don't even get that opportunity. Don't even get into a position to be able to fight for one. So for me to have such a good team behind me, Ace Boxing Promotions and Matchroom as well, and uh, get me to this point, get me a mandatory uh, title shot, and then possibly put me in, in uh, contention for a world title is massive on its own. You know, so I don't really want to let that slip at all. So. I obviously train the house down every fight camp, but this one's different, you know, this one's, this one's, you know, it's got a bit more oomph in it. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, I think it's it's gonna, someone like Herkovic is gonna, is gonna bring out the best in me as well. You know, some of these guys, like I said, we've fought the similar competition, you know, um, it's hard to look really good against people that, that aren't there to win sometimes. So getting someone that's gonna throw back, 
you know, I like my cameras a lot more as well. I think it's, I think it's really going to showcase the level that I'm at. Definitely, uh, I'll post a clip on um, on the socials the other day, and I think it's from uh, with Tony Sims, and he was talking about this fight when it was kind of in on the talks, and he said not not only this is a fight that obviously you would like, but also it's a fight that you need in your career. Is that fair to say? Definitely, definitely is. You know, like I'm. 22 and 0 now, and top 15 in the IBF and the WBO. I'm a bit on the fringe of a big fight. Been waiting, waiting patiently. You know, it's not like I don't want to take these fights. Like I've been, you know, with, been on the fringe, but being a being a big, tall, awkward southpaw and someone that hasn't kind of had that breakthrough fight fight at the moment. You know, it's hard to kind of land these bigger fights. And I think obviously with a with a fight with Hergovic, it's going to set me up for massive fights. Then on from uh, from here on in. So. You know, this is this is what we need. You know, I've been at it for a long time. I'm 33 years old this year. I don't have time to waste. You know, I need to start making a move on things. And I moved to this country to, uh, you know, to, to better myself and better my family's life as well. And at the moment, we haven't had that big fight, and now we finally have. And this is what we've been, this is what everything we've been working for. You know, I moved on the other side of the world two years ago. Been training hard with Tony for almost two years, and had three fights. Haven't been the most active. Had a couple injuries and a couple setbacks and fight pushback. Obviously, trying to land a bigger fight takes a bit more to kind of get that over the line but we're here now and and, and that's and that's all that matters so it's just got to make sure I put it all into play De definitely I mean um, like you said you've been out of the ring for a while but like, like like you just touched on there you've now been in you've been in the UK for nearly two years now and that, surely that's only been a should this time has only been a benefit to kind of put to advance your progression with Tony Sims and Kevin and Peter in the team yeah definitely um, been working alongside Tony every day for those times that time as well so I think the first fight I had when I was over here and you got about two weeks of Tony and I was off to America to fight in New Hampshire and I didn't really get too much time up with him and then I think my second camp I got about eight nine weeks with him when I fought the Bracamonte at the O2 um, you know and, and then obviously had that fight against uh, the German and Australian on matchroom debut card against Patrick Corte so it's good to get a couple camps properly under Tony but now we've been for about I've been in the gym since December I've trained for a fight we, we thought we were going to be fighting in May then it was June then it was July then it was August then they're possibly going to push it back to September then it was back to August so it's been a wild ride but you know that's that's a good seven month training camp under Tony as well you know because we would pick up training we'd start sparring then we'd taper off a bit every time I got pushed back so you know I've been in the gym training hard been training for a fight pretty much since December you know been in and out of fight camps taking time off accordingly to make sure we don't burn out but, you know like I haven't just come off the couch for a couple of months you know I've been in the gym training very hard pretty much since my last fight definitely and you have been staying ready I do I do want to get your opinions on um, kind of the main event mm -hmm. uh, Joshua White Joshua White too and then I also want to get your opinion on potential future opponents for you mm. and the bar will start we'll start with that one is do you think uh, Alexander Usyk versus Daniel Dubois is kind of a, a clear cut um, Prediction is what many people are making out with Usyk being the vic victor. I think so. I think obviously with the pedigree that Usyk comes from, he's very, very slick, very hard to hit. I think Dubois is the kind of opposite. He's a bit of a big brute, but hey, it's a heavyweight division. We've all got to punch his chance, you know. If he can kind of come in there and and just kind of you know put him under pressure and try and land some big shots, you know, anything can happen. But you know, Usyk is such a smooth operator, and I think last time we saw uh, Dubois fight Lurina, the, the cruiserweight southpaw has all come up, had a bit of trouble with him, but obviously kind of come through and still pulled through that fight. So I think anything's possible, but I think my prediction, I think Usyk, I think he just, I think he wins um, majority 12 round decision. Perfect, and then we'll touch on uh, Joshua White too. I mean, in terms of rematches and British rematches, I don't think it gets much bigger than this one. But what, what is, what's your opinions on the main event? It's a good fight, you know. Both guys are probably at a similar crossroads in, in their careers as well. You know, both coming off um, kind of steady wins over Franklin. You know, not too decisive, not too not a massive uh, overall win for them. You know, they didn't look too great. So I think you know maybe these guys probably need something to get up out of bed for as well. And you know, they're probably like I said, they're in the same position and their careers at the moment. You know, like AJ, if he loses here, he missed out on a massive payday against uh, Deontay Wilder. So he's he's definitely going to be having to kind of pull through this fight and definitely secure that win. And obviously if Dylan White comes through with the win, he's, he's um, probably promised bigger fights as well. So, but I still think it's a good fight. It's a bit of animosity there, a bit of bad blood. Um, you know, the first fight was a barn burner as well. So, you know, why not? Why not make a fight? Like there's no other British heavyweights fighting each other really at the moment. You know, Tyson Fury's kind of been stuffing around a bit and putting the heavier division on uh, hold for quite some time now. So, um, but yeah, I think it's a good fight.
Definitely, definitely, man. I think it's a, I think it's a huge one as well. And I don't. Th- will we see Davis and McKinney fighting fight any UFC every week? Any time? I don't know, mate. You know, so when those bloody probably throwing fifty million to- in front of my face, you know. So it just depends where I'm at. But you know, never rule it out. I might even do the crossover. I come from an MMA background, so I wouldn't mind fighting him in the cage anyway. So we'll see what happens in the next few years. Look at that. But Davis and McKinney, Francis and Golden UFC yeah. title 2025. <laughs> mate. Looking forward to it. Davis and McKinney, thank you very much. Mate. Best of luck. Love it. Thank you very much, man. Cheers. Cheers.